we've got a big problem in front of us with this mountain of climate change here. You can see it on the graph here. I'm working on it as hard as I can. A lot of other people around Eureka Springs are doing things too. And here's what some of them are doing. In Eureka Springs, beautiful little town, this is the farmer's market that happens every week during the season. We love this. It's all fresh food. You can see, uh, this is just an example. Of course, we more than just me. We've got bread, we've got natural chickens, natural customers, they come organically to um, Everything is organic, everything is fresh. Everything on my table has been harvested yesterday. It's less than 24 hours old and uh, it's got all the nutrients. And not only this, but it hasn't traveled more than just a few miles. And what that means is it's incredible uh, the, the planet is, is going to get something out of it because we're not using any uh, excess energy to transport those things. We are not using any energy to um, package those things. About the planet, it's about you too. It's about your health. It's about getting the full impact of what food is supposed to do to you, which is to give you great health to build up your immune system and to fend off all that stuff. You know, forget medication, come to the market and buy fresh food. Farmers here at the market, this food was picked as recently as yesterday. It's the freshest food and the best tasting food you can get and the healthiest food. So come support the local economy at the local Eureka Springs Farmers Market. The farmers market reduces uh, the emissions from the food that travel. Well, food has to travel 1,500 miles usually to get to its destination, and our food doesn't travel anywhere near that far. At the most, it travels 50 miles, and so that reduces the output of carbon from cars that would be traveling and refrigeration, keeping it cool. I'm sure there are many other ways too. Jeff, can you tell me what the chamber is doing to try to uh, promote green tourism and green practices within the uh, chamber offices here? Well, outside of uh, our office here, of course, we're promoting all the wonderful outdoor things to see and do here in Rick Springs. We have some wonderful trails at Lake Leatherwood. We just finished some trails at Black Bass Lake. Uh, in the center of town, we've got some wonderful hiking trails uh, in town itself around the Crescent Hotel. And, St. Elizabeth's Church, uh, among others in town. We uh, certainly promote the uh, use and care of our rivers and waterways here, Beaver Lake, Table Rock Lake. There's hiking, biking, canoeing, kayaking, fishing and boating. Uh, we've got some wonderful lakes for diving here, some pristine, very clear lakes uh, that are good for night diving. We've got some wonderful caves and trails in the area. Inside the chamber, of course, one of the biggest things you can do is or save paper. And uh, one of the things we've done over the last couple of years is really try and move our communications to the electronic realm through email and uh, electronic notifications of our membership and communication back and forth through email. And that saves a lot of paper. We have a fairly large membership, about 400, 450 strong here. And to send letters out and communication out, uh, you're looking at uh, quite a bit of envelopes and quite a bit of paper to mass communicate with our membership. So we're beginning to rely pretty heavily on electronic media. Do things like have our, our faxes that come in, um, they get scanned on our, on our uh, copier, and then they get sent to our email, so we're not using paper, uh, wasting paper on the faxes. And of course, we do what we can to recycle here. Hi, I'm Barbara Harmony, and I'm the coordinator of the Springs Committee. And uh, I've been working to help preserve the springs for the last 30 years now. Uh, the water can travel very fast, especially the rainwater, can travel very fast and pick up pollutants. But right now the Springs Committee, uh, which is a committee of the Parks and Recreation Commission, has um, is working with the U.S. Geological Survey to on a project to try and rehabilitate the springs. They'll be doing a lot of major testing. This is another one of our projects. This is a Williams crawfish that uh, is unique to this area. And this is to make people aware of the storm drains and that the water going into the storm drains uh, gets to the springs.
So it, and it, it's amazing how much um, a can of oil or something like that can, can pollute. Just a, a, a lot, many gallons, I saw the figure recently, of, of water. Here uh, at Harding Spring today, the flow is really good. Uh, we've had a lot of rain, and it's just so wonderful to see the, this, this kind of a flow at the springs. People feel like springs are just really special. I know I feel like they're really special. Uh, and having that water just coming from the earth just has such healthful qualities about it. And of course, that's why people were attracted here in the late 1800s. They all came for cures, and thousands of cures were reported at that time. Of course, we know we should all own our own shit, man, but I wanted to bring a sense of reverence to the experience. We should have reverence for it, because it's part of the wonderful cycle of the world, of the earth. And by creating your own humanure, you will create microorganisms in the most wonderful topsoil. This is humanure. It actually spells the word. I used composted humanure and glued it onto my sign. And this is how you spell it. Every time you flush your toilet, you use from one to four gallons of water. And you do this probably 10 times a day. And, oh gosh, I have to go to the left side of my brain. Help me if I'm doing the numbers wrong. But it's like 40,000 gallons a year or some incredible amount that you're wasting. You're just using the water. You're polluting water to transport your humanure. When you don't have to do that, you can use a composting toilet. When the inside reaches 104 degrees, the pathogens will break down and the aerobic bacteria will grow. And that aerobic bacteria will create microorganisms and it's a wonderful rich environment. Go get your five gallon bucket, make your little box. There's wonderful resources out there and lots of people that are doing it, sometimes behind closed doors, sometimes right out in the open. I love you from Eureka Springs. Bye. I love you. Uh, this year at the Crescent Hotel, we have actually looked at how we can reduce our energy costs by 10%. In doing so, we've implemented a guest responsibility in each room. We've eliminated all styrofoam cups. We've also implemented all uh, power strips in each office to plug in all electronics to help save that extra power being pulled out from all the electronics to the wall. And uh, we also do our daily checks through each room, making sure all heat, AC, and fans are all turned off. Just another thing to come out here and enjoy the beautiful natural scene of Eureka is that it really goes along with just the green Eureka.